Ladies and Germans, how you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. And I'm Rang Ru. Hello, hello, hello. And it's the two of us. It's our beautiful voices. You know what that means, don't you, Rang? Uh, it's it's casting time, isn't it? We're here to cast. I was I was thinking so. I thought I was thinking nap time, but no, you're right. It is Steel Division okay. right now. For, normally 44, and we have ourselves a real cracker of a game on show here. It's a one v one, and who do we have playing? Mm -hmm. Well, on the left hand side, in blue, we have Mr. Serving Glory as the six airborne division, and on the right hand side, we have Sif yeah Sifrax. As the trope SS Panzer Grenade oh, Panzer Division. Now you were telling me before this particular cast started that uh, Surveying Glory is a bit of a, a rock star of this of the kind of like SD44 area. Now why is that? Uh, he is a fellow YouTuber too, and he does this lovely series called Anatomy Anatomy of Battle, where he goes into a one v one match that he played and just points out everything that he did from a more sentimental perspective. And this is actually one of the matches that he actually did. So, uh, after we're done casting, if you want to go and check his channel out, the uh, link will be in the description below, and I'll personally put this actual match that he played into the link if you want to check it out from his perspective. Indeed, indeed. And honestly, do me a favor, pass me along that link so that way I can check that out too. Because honestly, before today, sure. I had not heard of this good knight here, but he sounds like quite a gentleman. Yeah, he's very nice, and he has a uh, thick Scottish accent, which is uh, pretty awesome. All he the like more reason Scottish for you to accent. check out, then. Yeah. But so the Sixth Airborne, so he's playing somebody from the old, uh, the old, uh, not the Emerald Isles here. Which, geez, what am I talking about? But we're playing the Sixth Airborne. <laughs> not sure why I thought Scots for a second are Irish, but let's get back to it. Sixth I mean, Airborne. Yeah, what, what, what do we Scottish expect? Division. What do we uh, expect? Six... I don't. I don't often see these guys. Uh, Sixth Airborne is is off the deck. I honestly say it's not exactly a good deck in its current state they're very paper they don't have a lot of heavy armor or heavy stay in power they got a few infantry some anti-tank guns and really the veteran sheet is what keeps them in the game indeed and you see all the indeed. stars on their side just <laughs> oh my gosh it, it does look like a good night over there to the western side doesn't it now over yep. on the east Thank i do want to highlight we are going to have our little buddy the, the panzer two here and um oh there we go a little with the sixth, the airborne being so light, will he find himself being a little more important in this particular game? Do you think? Uh, yeah, especially if the Cromwell as well, because it is a lot of light armor. Heck, I think even the boy Cromwell have a good time against those three armored tetriarchs. So, no need for a firefly at all for Mr. Sifrax. Just two two twos, panda twos. The Cromwell is all he really needs to fight six airborne effectively. You know, when he first was setting up his units here with uh, Surveying Glory, um, I thought he was really kind of overloading on the top side of this map. Then you go down to the southern side, you realize a um, machine gun and anti-tank gun, that's all he needs. He doesn't need anything else to cover that. Nope, it's pretty much all he, all he can really get. We have looked at the decks before, and Surveying Glory for 6 Airborne deck is very A-phase light in terms of infantry. Just 4, or 2 times 4 of the AB powers, and then some AB vickers. Yeah, that's it. No brain groups, no leaders, no nothing. It's all B fate of air landings. And good lord, it seems like everyone's in that town. Yeah. Two, and those, four, uh, six. Yeah, wow, it actually almost is. All of his early infantry is out on the map. It, yeah, we'll see. AB powers are uh, at long range engagements against us, Panzer Grenadiers. Not going to have a good time because we all know the Bren gun is pretty much a nerf gun. But at <laughs> close range, Look how many submachine guns they got, mate. That's they got true. four submachine guns. That's, That's almost true. a stormtrooper squad. So if he can get in close, he's going to have heck of a time. But just looking at his current position, it doesn't seem to be the case. As Sifrax is a pretty good defensive location for nice at least a little bit of an open ground between him and the enemy. Now, okay, so the, the boy to Cromwell, are we really kind of surprised I'm not seeing him take a more active stance, maybe flanking around yep. this town? Yeah, I honestly think the boys would do wonderful down south because it can outrange your six pounders, Khan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if he can knock out the six pounders easy peasy, and the whole southern section will be in his control. And honestly, this whole southern part of the map and middle part too is really going to be in Sifrax's favor as Six Airborne does not have that long range advantage. Now, so far, we are seeing not a whole lot of fighting just yet. There we go, finally starting to kick on off with this town. Some probes happening up in these Pigren squads, and I get the feeling he's going to get torn to pieces, though. Uh, once he gets in close, yes, yes, he will, because that's, that's just a lot of AB powers, and 
For Mr. Survey Glory, for seven minutes, he goes to make sure that all his infantry stays alive. That's gonna be a bit of a challenge and a half, I got to admit. Yeah, especially if you bring in that Flak 38 a little bit more. I mean, that thing could just wreck all that infantry pretty darn quickly, I would think, wouldn't it? Yep. Yeah, he got the Panzer 2 as well, and that boy the Cromer was there and starting to put down some fire. And as you can see, Rivers of Fire support vehicles and plane. Zifrax is having a damn good time, hardly taking any losses on his Panzer Grenz. And he's got a fair number of them as well. I mean, he's not going particularly heavy. Nope. But at the same time, I mean, he's that's not inconsiderable. I'm looking at, what, four... Four Pioneers and actually three Furies as well, so he's got a decent amount of infantry for Phase A. Yeah, it's a pretty good amount, it's just enough to get you through with his trophy sense. Uh, that's definitely fair, definitely fair. So, who would you give the edge to early on with this? Uh, honestly, I'm gonna give the edge the entirety of the map to Sifrax, as this, this map really just plays if he wanted if he decided to actually play in the southern section of the map. Up north, it's gonna be a little bit more dicey. Just because of all the uh, AB powers yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, I, I, I really am going to give this a six Now, we are seeing with this weird kind of um, three inch mortars coming on in. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, this could be a light way for Surveying Glory to really kind of take things back in his favor. What do you say? Yeah, those mortars, and I believe he also has. Yeah, you know, yeah, he only has the mortars in the phase will be very useful because that can keep array of light vehicles so sort of 2 2 2 the infantry almost go down flag 38 down south and now, am, because... am i wrong wait wait it's just the three inch mortars i'm also seeing a 380 uh 81 millimeter off map call oh yeah he also has the uh off map party of course you have to see uh but you really need everything dead and that off map party be a wonderful unit to bring in up north, and I think artillery will be a very important part for Vainglory in A phase to or keep his defensive position in place. Now, I have to say, for me, I'm a little bit afraid for the German tanks. Um, look at the size of those gams, man. Those gammon bombs are going to cause a lot of issues. I don't really know why the Germans are being so aggressive with their vehicles. Uh, yeah, the gammon bombs can be rather scary, but you have to get within 100 meters, which is quite a Quite a jog, I have to say. Oh, that one rack here, or Pathfinder squad, I believe, got a grenade off on the clock, did it? Oh, well, yeah, there's been, there's been four or five grenade, um, gammon yeah. bombs already, so I'm, I'm kind of stunned that Sifrax is being still as aggressive as he has been. Yeah, I mean, the transmission got damaged on the Cromwell, but didn't exactly get the full on kill. And, oh, this isn't looking too good for Sifrax now. His Cromwell is really, with that transmission damage, it's going to have a hard time pull him back and that Tetriarch could come in and get the snipe. And I believe that's exactly what he's going to do right now. Let's take a quick look at, never mind, he's got to get in and act actually onto the main road again. That's not going to be too quick, I don't think. Yeah, he has to go kind of around the north and he, he still has a good chance of killing that Cromwell. He does mm -hmm. have veteran tree advantage too. Now overall we are going to see it's 45-55 between these two mm -hmm. uh, valiant foes with the Germans coming out ahead on this one. Um, a lot more infantry is rushing on in. I think this will be pretty much the balance of whatever the yeah, Brits have left, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you can get some more, like, recon pathfinders and snipers, but apart from that, that's pretty much all this AP power gone. You see snipers? Like, I didn't see any snipers myself, but alright. Oh, wait, right. no, never mind. Oh, it's like two snipers in a second, about it. Now, interestingly enough, we are seeing that despite. The relative, I would say, lightness of the, uh, the kind of British start here, the Germans really can't force them back out until phase B. We're taking a look at the decks right now. Now, why is that? Uh, they don't really have any artillery in phase A for the Germans. And, well, they got the fire support, but they need to get direct line of fire, and even with auto cannons, this is that's too much infantry to deal with. Mm -hmm. It's just so many AP powers, it's going to take forever and a half to do through them all. Well, you know, good old Panzerwerfer can easily knock this all out. Unfortunately, we're not going to see that kind of heavy artillery until Phase C, oh. even. Uh, we did see, yeah. by the way, the Panzer II did go down the valiant little plucky foe, uh, getting taken oh. out by those uh, derided Gammon Bombs. Yeah, it was... always seems the Panzer II dies rather rather fast in every match I see it in. Well, to it's be the fair... same, because mm -hmm. it is a nice little, it is a nice little town. 
Well, I was going to say, it does kind of make sense, though, too. I mean, think about it. The Panzer II, at this point, was really just a training vehicle and, at best, a scout vehicle. Yep. So, I guess it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's... Say it was out of date at this point in time, it, it's an understatement. Yeah, we do see a second run being brought out to avenge his uh, brother, yeah. Indeed. Indeed. I'm, just, I'm still amazed how the Germans, like... This Southern Saxon would have been such a good area of attack, just... I'm really annoyed that Cromwell has been raced up north because it, he could have completely broke through the southern sector in phase B, reinforced it with Panthers and proper AP gun, and this match would really be in his advantage. Oh, he is still getting that plus one point advantage, so he's not doing too bad, mm -hmm. but I still think he could have done a better job by focusing down south a bit more. And what's more, I mean, I'm actually kind of stunned that we're seeing there's two more Tetrarchs being brought on in. Damn, that's quite a bit of harm there. It's very light armor, and also those Tetriarchs are not cheap as chips, only 55 points each. True, so I mean, think about it, it's really just a giant gun mounted on top of like a pathetic little track, so. Yeah, it's it's just an armored two pounder gun with a machine gun. It's It doesn't even have a HE ammunition on its main cannon. It's really just for fighting against those light vehicles, and it does kill one of those 250 slash nines, and just. There's not much in this town anymore from Sifarak. Yeah, and I'm happy you mentioned that. We are at 4852, so the uh, the Allies are still losing tickets out against the Germans, but I don't feel it's going to be happening too much longer now. Um, yeah, not too much longer. I mean, once it counts this town, it's going to be a nice bit of ground covered, but it's after the town, Colin. It's going to be hard, because that's a lot of open ground, and it's not until sea phase where they can start getting... 17 pounders and, you know, challenges and the like, that helps them and allows them to fight over open ground much more effectively. Till then, they have to rely on air power of Patriarchs and Cromwell. Definitely sounds correct. Now, uh, I thought we were going to see this this kind of flak track come on up to the northern side and try to pelt down some of this infantry, but we, it looks like he's cheating down to the south, and I can't say I understand why. Yeah, and it's also out of ammo, it seems, which is almost out of ammo, which is not a good predicament for any unit, and I think, I think for Mr. Sifrax, he just should just back out the town and just contain it. Try to create mm -hmm. a no-man's land between him and the town, and then just try to move on in another section of the map, because at this point, until he gets heavy artillery, not a chance in how he's going to be able to take that town back, it's just too many AB pounds. But we are into Phase B, though, so, I mean, we could be seeing some of those Panthers and some of that kind of heavy artillery coming in now. And, of course, I'd be yep. a little more coy with that, but regardless, we could see some legitimate firepower. Yeah, I'm not seeing any units being brought up immediately, so I think Zifrax is safe enough for we have to pound the tank or the Tiger. However, we are going to see we are going to see exactly what you're talking about. We will see the Brits basically pushing back anything that really remains the Germans. Yep. In a few heartbeats here. I obviously thought it was really ballsy and kind of dumb to bring all the AD parrots at the start, but after seeing just having that amount of just men in a town, even though the machine gun aren't as good, it's still enough to push the Germans back. It's, just, it, it's too many people to shoot, Carl. That, that's the problem. It definitely seems fair. So the blob play is definitely favoring the Brits here, and I can't help but feel that if the Germans had any sort of A-phase artillery, this would be a completely different game already. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of aggression down south now. Just have one, two, five, zero, so that's nine taking a huge strong of ground. But like you said, just that A-phase Panzer Alpha, uh, yeah, I believe the Trophy SS can get one. Would that made a huge difference. Absolute game changer. ME109 is making a ground run, so it's a pack howitzer out in the field, and one ME109 is going to make a rocket run, and... Then a pin it, so doing a little bit of good work right there. And there's still another one out in the field that was on combat air patrol, and I think... Interesting, he's going after the Tetrarchs instead. Not sure I understand that one. I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah, I would have gone on probably a second one on the Howitzer just to get the full-on kill, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wouldn't agree with the Tetriarch run. Maybe it's all they could see at the time. True, so maybe what I'll do real quick is kick on over to what we see for Sifrax. Maybe we can understand a little bit better. He sees Ooh. nothing. He has, like, his, all his recon down south, but 
But I can understand not having recon up in the northern area because there's a town, but it's not doing them any favors as well. True. Now, for Vainglory, he can pretty much see the uh, Cromwell of Panther 2, so, and he has a very good eyesight on what's going on in this middle area of the map. You know, behind enemy lines right now, that 2 high SS9 can do quite a bit of damage, I think, if it gets into a good position. One nice thing, too, is we're seeing spot troops coming on in, so these guys are going to spot, I think, four that half track, and I'll keep them alive, maybe a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Maybe flank the six and don't get a kill, but I don't know. I mean, you got a Panzer IV up north, and why, why is he bringing a tank into a town fight? I don't know. I have no idea. It's like bringing a gun to a knife fight, except that it's in the dark. Yeah, you, I mean, exactly. You don't bring a gun. To, you don't bring a gun to a knife fight in a one meter by one meter room. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. Now, for all you people who live in any place that's not the rest of the world, that is 3.03 <laughs> feet, by the way. Oh, there we go. Just, you know, want to help out, help out the, you know, your neighbors down here to the southern side of that border. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got you guys and your uh, silly imperial system. Hey, man, you know what? When we left the UK, we left to go jolly old England for our own destiny, we still wanted to keep a little bit of the taste of home. It wasn't like you Canadians up there. <laughs> now, um, I do want to claim a note, by the way, we are seeing Surveying Glory has somehow managed to flip the switch on territory, so he controls 10% more than his opponent. The number's only yep. growing. So yeah, definitely knocking out a few of those southern and middle units is helping out, and there's really not much here. It's just, it's really just the pack 38, man. That's, and, and that AA half track thing, but that's really it. Uh, though it's 250, so it's really going for the home run. Yeah, but what is he going to be able to do here? Pick off an, an HMG? Like, big deal. Yeah, that's... And he doesn't really have any line I, a line sights either. And no, he oh, no, doesn't. Maybe he's trying to get a checkmate. Um, and here, folks, it's going to be why it's great to have line of sight. This Tetrarch can see the Panzer IV. Yep. The Panzer IV cannot see Jack. Yep. And those Tetrarchs have a very oh, good never chance. Mind. And, there we go. There we go. The Tetrarchs have a very good chance as he fights in the Panzer IV because they barely have enough to pan it, but it's a 55 point unit against what, 140 point unit? You can get like three Tetrarchs, one Panzer IV moves. And, and he has those three Tetrarchs for that matter, so he's got two of them still on yep. here. They're, they're both pinging around into the Cromwells like crazy. I can't say I understand yeah. that. Yeah, I'd definitely try to get his two moving up because he can get some pretty good flank shots onto his Panzer IV if he get him into his. Right side of the town. True. True. The transmissions have been damaged, at least on one of those. We have a bit of a furball going down to the southern side, I think, between the Mosquito and the ME109. Tempest, excuse me, I'm sorry, I just kind of yep. assumed. Um, Boy de Cromwell finally does die, so the uh, Brits do remove their captured product from German hands here. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Panzer IV just starts I picking off a couple of AA materials in the town. Yeah, and he got he got a second and a fourth to fight in this town. A sec. I I don't no, understand. No infantry. I don't it's understand. Not... Two fifty, by the way, died Wait. just to the left of that uh, angular force where the spot troop is right now. I dare yep. say, yes, it was a Cromwell. It took two rounds, but he took him on out, and that's all she wrote. Oh well. Uh, Sifax is still up by about 500 tickets, 520 as we speak, but Surveying Glory is kind of like a terrier right now. He is just biting down, he's not letting go. <laughs> it's cats and up, that's for sure. Yeah, it's just, this whole middle section has been completely neglected by the German friend. It's really the key to winning, I have to say. And oh, Marcy Pathfinder, gonna be dropping in that hot fire. He is, but I think he's going to find it's a little bit warm under the collar for yeah. himself here. And he has no AA to really protect him, so I think the Messerschmitt is probably going to get a kill. Actually, the Messerschmitt, yeah. honestly, the Messerschmitt was almost out of ammo, though, too, so, geez, that was a uh, yeah, bit of a surprise Such there. I, I wouldn't say it was probably the best time to bring the path lane. There are two fighters flying over the field, but uh, he killed the Pack 38, and that's, that's really it. <laughs> yeah, that's all it's going to be. 
Now, yep. Tetrarchs are still in place on the northern side, and this P4 is not going to be able to get any kind of vision on them. No, they're, they're in good positions, those Tetrarchs. They can just pop out when they want and get a good close range shot. And it seems like it might be a case up north as that one plan to fall run it dangerously close to those two Tetrarchs. I don't know if he's trying to pick off this AA. Yes, it looks like he is. So one shot, one yep. kill, that's done. Yeah, it's a stack hound. And I feel like he's almost, I know my is gonna be backing off. But Surveying Glory could probably get a good, you know, sniping that pants for if you moved up both Patriarchs right now. I mean, it's a two on one engagement. That's true, but if you lose that, at that point you do give up your entire northern side of the map. Yeah, good point too. Uh, worth noting in the meantime that we're seeing a new wave of infantry having to get brought on in. Four new squads. And, mm -hmm. uh, can't say I really blame that. A lot of British men have given their final w uh, moments to hold on to this town. Yeah, it's definitely been of a bridge too far moment, but, uh, where there's no bridge in sight. True. But it's still a lot of German tanks. True. And, uh, so, actually, wait a sec. Whoa, we have... These dual tempests. Yep, I yep. dare say there goes the ME109. He overstayed his welcome, and is he gonna hit somebody? No, I thought he was gonna hit maybe oh, like the uh, pathfinder for I, a second. I, yeah, yeah, that's pretty close. So it's only 100 meters, and in in the airplane crashing into ground targets, yeah, it's pretty close. Very much so. So uh, one tetrarch is firing at the wrong P4, and I believe he's gonna pay for his hubris in just a moment here. Yep. So now all that's yep. left is just uh, one Tetrarch in the town as a command, and another kind of Tetrarch mm -hmm. just in the northern side of this hamlet. And I kind of really wish, were I a German player right now, that I'd be popping in some more mortars here. Again, I feel like he's really yeah. missing an opportunity. He He's trying to bring tanks into a town fight, and we all know what happens in Stalingrad. It's not the best idea. He's also bringing up a rubber in too, which... It's probably a better choice than the tanks, to be honest. Yeah, but where is he putting tempest. it? Check, take a look where he's putting it. Where is he? Oh, oh, why don't... Okay, he's bringing the Panzer IV down, so I got to agree with that. Uh-huh. And... Yeah, I want to see a rubber and I agree with Panzer up north, because he already has that one AA unit down, so, but I think he's just trying to concentrate his AA units in one location instead of spreading them out, but at the same time, just the infantry support alone at the rubber ring things up would just be much more useful in that northern section. I would tend to agree. Another rocket run coming on in takes up a six-pounder, and that's another right. bit of AT that just gets brought off the map yet again. Yeah, the German player, even though he's been rubbing the Netzlagunt, if I can actually bloody say the word, on infantry and whatnot, he's been bringing those planes quite a bit. Those Mendelsmiths and ME-109 rocket planes. Been coming in full force. Yeah, and it's I would only say... really now that Vainglory is bringing in like Tempest and whatnot to try and deal with them. And it seems like he may lose one Tempest. Oh, wow, no, I think he just barely made oh, it out. I might nope. be wrong there. Yeah, he just got out just like by the skin of his teeth. But no, so this Rebel Vent, I really feel like, is in a better position to attack this town. P4, in the meantime, trades shots with that command, with that uh, Cromwell 5. I'm in a curious position where both guys can kill the other one. It's just who gets lucky first. Oh, oh bounce on the Cromer. That's uh, rather embarrassing for the Panzer, yeah. Hmm, probably true, but you know what? I'm forcing him back, and there we go. So we can see a force back, yep. and... Never mind, he's just out of range now, so forget that one. Yep. He doesn't want to move up too close, because that 6 mm -hmm. he just on standby if he just crosses a hedgerow line and honestly he needs to get some sort of recon in his middle section does have that 2 free free but it's not exactly in the best position right now at least we are finally seeing some strong pioneers and this really could turn around this this town fight if he can just manage to stop getting him pinned the second he brings him on the map yeah cannot say i agree with the way he's really kind of attacked this town nope it's like, like we keep saying, just a bit of heavy artillery and you just level the town to pieces from far away. Well, Junger's coming on in and he's making a ground attack just in the middle of his mortar. Oh, he's there we go. Really? That's... He's wasting it on the mortar? Uh... Okay. I know, I'd say killing the mortar, I mean, it's a good idea. Probably would have been better to try to get the infantry and do the breakthrough. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of mixed on your opinion, to be honest. I think both would have been good targets. It's been a long week, so maybe know. I'm just tired with this, but it just, it's <laughs> really confusing some of these tactical decisions being made by Sifrax. It seemed like he had a really great thing going early on. Yeah. And now he just dithered it away. I mean, he's been attacking this town really with just tanks, and that's not a terrible, terrible idea if you bring in infantry to support, but he really hardly brought up an infantry to support his tank engagement. And I'm happy you put and it that way, because that's just what... It, what be worth mentioning is yes yeah. this is a game of combined arms you cannot send in one unit and expect it to really kind of win the day i'm looking at you yes. michael Pittman. um it's, it's not it's not company of heroes too you can't just out veteran tiger and <laughs> oh, tr move into the enemy trust base. me there's, there's even some people who try to do that and i guarantee you it does not go well challenger in the <laughs> meantime coming on down and falling back Ooh, this could be perfect if you can get shots off on it oh never mind that could have been gorgeous, but no. Oh no. So it looks like this last Tetrarch is probably going to give his life to, his P uh, no, to uh, cover for this Challenger. And it's rather amusing because Sifrax is really Ooh, never only mind. Been up Panzer Force. He did lose that one, yeah. Again, he one. Is... Okay, he's got one Verfraumann. He's got two Hummels he can be bringing on in. Those need to be yep. his decisions here. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you with that. And he's using a lot of Panzer fours, And, you know, going with medium tanks isn't a terrible idea, but a Tiger, a Panther, definitely would help out just having that heavy armor on the field. He is taking, exchanging some shots in the middle with his Panzer four, but I feel like he just... I mean, just look how many units he has on the field, Sifrax. It's, it's not a lot. Just just barely north of a half dozen. Looks like he's got eight on there right now. Yep. Thank God he just brought in some infantry. Otherwise, he wouldn't even have that. Yeah, oh, fi finally a, a panther. A proper tank being brought in the southern section. And look, his southern section, it's just it's clean. It's unsafe when it's manifest destiny land for you to <laughs> run through and take. Uh, meanwhile, on the northern side, he loses more and more of his tanks. So 64 36. He's down 300 plus tickets now at this point. Yep. And it's the only MG42. Going yeah, oh and gosh. really, really surveying sort of glories has kind of set up a kill zone in that town because if anything gets too close, it just lit up by the Tetriarchs, the Cromwells, the infantry, etc., etc. Challenge up to the northern side, preventing any flanks. Jeez, yeah, this is just been a, mm -hmm. this is kind of embarrassing now. Yeah, it's really just it's it's all this play dented on this one area of the map where uh, Sifrax is really ignored rest of it so now it seems like he's seen the arrows of his rays and still want to put some pressure down south and honestly our path is going to be a huge deal because that's going to force uh surveying glory to probably get a challenger or 17 pounder to defend his seven side and that sort of oh, no. leave some pressure up north Cromwell's oh. going to make an end oh, no. run around this tree line he's going to get picked off this is a bit unfortunate he's just moving he's not moving he's not even moving oh, no. and engaging eh, that was a beautiful shot yeah, right there P4. that's oh. Just didn't north of 200 the, meters. Didn't even get a shot off. He just kept on running. Kept on running. But that's going to clear up the middle section here for Sifrax to really move up his Panzer IV and try and do something. But I feel like he needs like a Panzer Grenadier unit in this mid to help screen the ray. It's got to be something, though. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Now, we do have those it's airborne got... snipers you were talking about before, so forgive me for not mm -hmm. believing you, but I, just, I didn't see them on the deck somehow, I guess. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to be too useful against the bloody Panzer IV, unless they can do some Sniper Elite 2 stuff and shoot the gas engine, but seems like it's going to be a running around. You Trying know, we are going to see some Verfraumen, though, action up to the northern side. He's <sighs> just a move engagement Finally. for some reason. Finally, but... he's oh, he's getting the proper unit shot. He needs to win the match now. You know, if he just blindly targets that uh, the front part of that town. <laughs> I feel like he'll just take oh. out the entire army. Yeah, I, I mean, it's going to get rough in a second. And it has quite a bit of ammunition. And that, yeah, it, yeah, it's the same thing in Company of Heroes 2, right? You have to all the commander rest get, correct? A little half-track thing? Uh, they got um, Stukosafus, technically. So yeah, it is a rough ramen, uh, yeah. Fiatzig. Jeez. 
Oh and there we go. The That's what he yep. should have done. Make the town worthless. To... Yeah. The buildings on fire, the infantry pinned down. It's what he needed to do. Now the only thing he has to worry about is the fact that this Cromwell is pushing on in, and this guy will be able to see him... Not soon, never mind. I didn't see him no. behind that tree line. I thought he was a little bit further yep. forward than that. But, but um... there's, there's nothing protecting uh, Sith ranks from this north and so if he decides to just attack. It's like a panda grenadier and a half track. Yeah, that's all that he's got. And down south, the Panthers doing something though. It is going to get bombed in a second. They have forced and then rocket back. again. Oh, damn. You know, the Typhoon AT, I never kind of appreciate how heavily armed that thing is. In terms of rockets? Yes, there's an awful lot of, yeah. ground, of firepower there. Yeah, it's, uh, it makes big kabooms, and if you want to use Typhoon ATs effectively, you need to get a side shot from the Panther. He sort of tried and done that, but he did force the Panther to fall back for now at least, so get ruled by him a little bit of time, and Vainglory does have quite a bit of a point advantage. Still at a plus two con, so it's, uh, it's looking pretty good for him, so... Actually, I like this call right here, so rocket attack going after that Willy's uh, off yeah, map Colin. Go. I really like that call, actually. Yeah, I didn't even see that really is calling any off map either, so... That's exactly that's complete, why I like it. <laughs> completely negated it, and that was the, uh, that was, that was the naval artillery. That was his only naval artillery. So, um, yeah, no, no big guns coming in for Vainglory. Now, 17-pounder oh. is going to get himself into action, I think. Yeah, he can go after both the Panther and the P4, so... And oh, there goes yeah, one of go. them. Jeez. Fast as lightning. You know, he does have that spar troop and behind enemy lines. And can he see that 17 pounder? Yes, he can. Or he, or he could. So. And I'd be very scared using that pamper right now. And especially now with the Challenger down south. Can we just appreciate, though, if you look back up to the northern side, you see the second wave of rockets has been thrown at that town. Yep. Look at that for a second for me. How That's much just... of that is just a flaming conflagration? Yeah, I mean, I must have played my mixtape or something. Ha! <laughs> and actually, speaking of good old uh, the Tiga Witzman here, he is now on this map. And a challenger might have him in his sights? No, he's going after that uh, pig run instead. Yeah. And also, the challenger is rather morale damaged at the moment, so I don't think he has the best chances. And he's cleared up his town quite nicely. There's not much in that town anymore. But right Please. now, Vang Vanglory's at a plus two. There's nine minutes in the match. He, he has to make some pretty crazy push if he wants to at least draw. True. At the same time, though, you kind of have to feel like... Uh, to me, anyway, I kind of feel like Sifrax threw this away. Sifrax had this yeah. game in the bag, I, I would say. He really yeah. didn't even have to focus on this northern side. Yeah, I mean, we saw how easy he leveled that town. If he just brought in artillery earlier, or had it in his deck earlier, or just something, it would have helped out quite a bit. And, uh, yeah. I mean, down south, the Panther can't exactly do too much, because it's in between a rock and a hard place, without being a challenger on a 17-pounder. So... And he, I don't know, he doesn't really have the momentum, I think, to really do anything to Frax. Not anymore, I don't think. You're yeah. right. We got challenges. He he is bringing out a decent amount of planes, and they do, they're doing they're doing God's work. I mean, the JU-88 has been doing some decent bombing runs, and same with the uh, rocket Emmy run on lines, but not really enough to break through. True. Oh, Charlie goes down down south, so that's gonna open up for the Panther. Except for that 17 pounder. Yeah. But the even then, might just beautiful amounts of range. Yeah, can the 17 pounder shoot through that little crook? No, he's moving. Unfortunately, he did actually have the ability to see him. I think he's shifting right now, and that's going to be a very, yeah. very different position now. He's he's at uh, Vain Glory's actually hiding it behind tree line on purpose, I think, and only moving up onto the tree line when he actually has a confirmed shot. So. Very micromanagement, yeah, roof with 17 pounders. So now, now he's in a good spot, so. And uh, that's gonna be close. Batman. Look at the northern side of the map and tell me if you see anything wrong. Never mind. There we go. 
There was a TOT barrage, but it was going to be called down exactly on the 203's head. <laughs> and never mind, the 203's now dead. Indeed. That indeed. Was... <laughs> that would be a bit silly. And the Panther down south just. Just a hair's array from being blown up by that 17 pounder, to be honest. I do like the implicit threat of keeping these two Tempests in the area for Survey and Glory. He got them both in combat air patrol. Um, yep. Though, I get the feeling that uh, he really didn't need to have both of them there. One, what I think, would have been enough. Yeah, I'd usually I'd have two fighters. I'd just have Run doing patrols and then Run it backs off. You just bring the second one to get constant air power. And also, if you only have Run fighter on the field and they buy a fighter to chase your fighter, you can rip out your second sneaky ninja fighter and then get the kill instead of like sewing all your hands at runs. Indeed. Indeed. So, so runs. by the way, 17 pound of the north gets taken on out, and I believe this challenger is going to get pinned. No, yeah. falling back though. Perfect time for Bitman to come in and take his shot. There's no thing, nothing left here at all for him to be afraid of. No, no, nothing at all. Just, I mean, the Cromwell could get a kill, but it's not exactly in the best location. And just that one artillery unit has done so good. Why wasn't it here before? Oh, it, it's really bugging me, Khan. Well, Tyson and Bucky even more, that 17 pounder just went down. To the south. Oh, yeah. Oh, damn. And that's really going to open up for the Panther, but it's five minutes. He has to get like 1,200 points to take his back, so. Yeah, it's all good for Safe Rex. I would say you're probably right there. As much there as it does grieve me to say it. Um, Typhoon 18 might get picked off on retreat, though. Yeah. Uh, never mind. Oh, no. It, it's a little bit faster, I think, than the Mezzus Mate. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. So I'm not, I'm not going to either confirm or deny it. And look at all the infantry reinforcements being brought in to uh, restock the dead. More lambs to the slaughter, that's all it is. Yeah, but two uh, artillery pieces ready to fly again. Be able, if it is our landing, that's going to be a bit scary for the Tiger because they do have Piatch. Where am I kidding? They're Piatch. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Anti-tank crap. Exactly. Exactly. Don't, don't yeah. make me laugh. Tetrarchs and the stack on, by the way, gonna line up on the southern side, and we're seeing. Yep, one shot has sent two of them packing. <laughs> Got two birds of run stone here. Indeed, indeed. Oh, you know, when you have the big dogs out to play, you don't send in a little puppy to take them on. Exactly. And but the thing is, yo, because uh, Sifrax has no recon, he can't really see his tetrarchs falling back all the way out route. Uh, though he did, he was able to see the stag out even before it started firing yeah. him, though, too, so maybe that's a little bit different. And you're right, they are all air landing troops inside that town, or what's left of it, but that Wurfraumann yep. is just laying down the smackdown some more, I would think. Nope, misses completely. Never mind, I take it all yep. back. Bit of a shock there. Uh, yeah. I mean, the Tiger is moving in close, taking a few hits from the six pounder, but not going to be anything too scary, especially with two free free. Helping out. You were saying? Well, a crew, uh, you know, crew knocked out. It's just a little bit of a bacon, yeah. I was going to say, watch the next shot, take him on out. <laughs> <laughs> that's just the tiger's luck here. I mean, Ripman always dies in silly rays. Yeah, <laughs> Ripman always dies in silly rays. Very, very yeah. true. Now, strangely enough, we are going to see a Flak 88 being called on, and I'm not sure I really kind of understand why this got picked. Maybe, I think, maybe Sifrax is just running out of troops at this point. I guess he wanted it to deal with his Tempest chat being brought up, but it's it's a little bit far back, I have to say. Yeah, can't say I understand. Yeah. Panther, though, and P4 are pushing back this Cromwell. Might be able to take shots. Yep, there it goes. And that will be enough. Yeah, now Sifrax is actually starting to make a bit of a breakthrough now, but it's, it's two minutes, 45 seconds left. It's it's a breakthrough too little, too late. Yes, yes, I'm happy yeah. you put it that way, because frankly, it should have been done a heck of a long time ago. Yeah. Now, will we see another Vruf Ramen shot before it happens? I think we will. Yep. Um, the question is, will he actually do anything with it? And and sources say he's blown up half the town, so past that, no. Yep. 
I mean, that, that, that town really is just on fire, just human, and that is... That's lost. Well burning. That's a polite way of putting it. Um, we're going to say yeah. Vitman is going to kind of circle around part of the town and engage in his own kind of pincer here, but even then, not doing a whole lot. And this rough Rama is just looking to, I think, close off any attempts at reinforcement. Yeah, just for the rest of the town that's barely still alive. Hack Howitzer's out. Command Tetrarch comes on up and gets blown away in one round. And uh, I'm, I'm not going to be too out of line, I think, to say it, but I think we're pretty much done with this particular game here. Yeah, Vainglory is really going to be taking the victory, and he did a pretty good defense at the start. It really comes down to his opponent not taking advantage of the flanks, and Sifrax fell into the like one of the worst things possible, and that's his tunnel vision card. That's the worst disease that a player could fall upon. Mm -hmm. That's a bit hard. You know, worst symptom our player can fall upon in this game because if you're attacking run area and it's not going too well, especially in a one v one, it's a very good idea to attack another area because it's usually not that well defended. Exactly, we've got to pull some 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 zoo out here. Attack your opponent where he's weakest, not where he's strongest, my good sirs. Exactly, and you know, ground at the northern side, ground at south, ground at middle. It's all ground in the end of the day, and it's all going to give you the same amount of points. So. Even though, you know, sometimes the town may seem like a better place to me grind into, capping that open field down south will just give you the map advantage that you need to win, that territorial number. Now, I will say, this might be the only match that we do see where Michael Vittman survives Survive. until the end of the game. Yeah, or well, I mean, we got, you know, at least a minute left or 30 seconds left or something. So maybe as Howitzer gets an anti-tank round off, if it, okay, if that thing penetrates, it. if that thing <laughs> penetrates, I will eat my hat. I don't wear hats usually, but I'll I'll, I'll buy one and I'll eat it. I don't think it's gonna happen here. Now that two thirty three. Oh. oh, there we go. Never mind. Yeah. It's all it's all set there and done. There we go. Folks. Oh, God. It's all set and done. But so the tiger does survive. And that'll be a good game. Exactly, exactly. So that is now going to be a major victory over here for surveying glory. So the good knight does manage to take the victory. What twenty oh five? Yep, to eight eighty six here. Yep, and just look at the KD ratio. Sifrax got a lot of kills later on, probably due to that Wrath Ramen, but in the end of the day, Serving Glory, he just got the ground and held it. I just want to say, how much did that Wrath Ramen? It, Actually, not that much. No, that much. No, who got all the kills? Nah, I think the Rimmon got quite a few. I, I'm thinking the Wrath Ramen weakened a lot of those units, and then the Tiger just got some very good run hit kills on you know, one to three man infantry squads left alive. That's true. That definitely seems yeah. fair. And there's definitely, I mean, the people who are pulling the, the weight here, that Cromwell that was out for a while, the Panzer Four that was out for a while, again, had he just deployed it in a different position or he just pounded yeah. that town instead, it's yeah. so much better for him. I, 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 I can't, like, begin to just talk about how the Cromwell would have been lovely down south. It has, it can kill the six pounders, before the six pounders can kill it. That's a huge You know yep. how big of an advantage that is, Khan. That's You're not overstating it by just stressing it, trust me, I'm completely other with you. Uh yeah. I, I think we've really like said everything about this match. Sun Van Glory did a good job, just Sifrax just fell to that tunnel vision. Yep, and we we all do at some point. That that near yeah. vision is just you know, that's a problem, man. That's why we, we wear sunglasses deadly. at night. <laughs> yeah but alright yeah. so folks and, and indoors exactly even more true uh, but folks please make sure you do check out Surveying Glory he does an excellent excellent job he's a great example of what this community should be um, mm -hmm. like Rangu said he's going to post it in his description once he gives me that, that link I will definitely be doing that myself but that's going to about do it for me today what do you think Rang? yep I'm uh, I, I, I'm, do I'm done with this match I was going to say, I yeah, struck dumb. He's speechless, folks. That's how finished he is with this. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's going to do it today, yeah. guys. This has been Connell Rook. I'm Rang Roo. We'll take, take you guys easy. all soon. Take it easy.